गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू जी के टूडे एंड टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज फॉर फिफ्थ एंड सिक्स ऑफ मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री लेट स्टार्ट विद इंडियन स्टेट्स एनर्जी ट्रांजेक्शन रिपोर्ट विच स्टेट्स मेड द मोस्ट प्रोग्रेस इन ट्रांजेक्शन टू क्लीन इलेक्ट्रिसिटी सो कर्नाटका एंड गुजरात स्टेट्स आर अमंग द मेजर स्टेट्स मेकिंग द मोस्ट progress in transition to clean electricity and this is according to a new report on indian states energy transition which is prepared by the institute for energy economics and financial analysis along with ember okay so the report has basically analyzed total 16 states which together account for 90% of india's annual power requirement fine so these two states are karnataka and gujarat now talking about few more important ranks and indices so basically you would have heard about a ranking named as price growth in luxury housing index and in this the city mumbai has been ranked at 37th position okay this is an important question then a very famous personality named as elon musk has stopped the bloomberg billionaires index report recently okay and now he is again the richest person on the planet fine in this second position was occupied by bernard arnault and he is a french businessman okay now there is this human development index in which india has been ranked at 132 position among 191 countries okay which are the top 3 countries in this first is switzerland second is norway and the third is the country iceland now according to swiss air tracking index named as iq air mumbai has been ranked as the most polluted city in india and second most polluted city globally within a week between 29th of january and 8th of february okay so basically mumbai has overtaken delhi as most polluted city in india which are the top 3 most polluted cities worldwide first is lahore from the country pakistan second is mumbai from india and the third is kabul kabul is from afghanistan okay now let's move to next question next question says which union ministry launched the grievance appellate committee so minister of state for electronics and it mr rajiv chandrashekhar launched the grievance appellate committee and it is a faceless dispute resolution mechanism that makes the digital platforms accountable to the digital nagrics okay and this mechanism is an important part of the overall framework of making the internet open safe trusted and the digital platforms accountable okay so this committee has been launched by ministry of electronics and it now let's see few important things why this ministry was in news these days recently the digital payments utsav has been launched by ministry of electronics and it and the main objective of the event is to create awareness of the digital payment and it is being conducted on the sidelines of the g20 meeting and talking about g20 india has taken the g20 presidency from the country indonesia from 1st of december 2022 and now india would be president of g20 for next one year okay now also ministry of electronics and it was in news because recently this ministry has launched a digital india mobile van right and main objective of this van is to spread awareness of digital india initiatives and also to spread the word about the g20 and also to promote the g20 digital economy working group okay and lucknow was the first destination of the mobile van where the g20 digital economy working group meeting was first held okay 
Now next is which bank has completed the acquisition of City Groups India consumer business? So recently Axis Bank has completed the acquisition of City Groups India consumer business for an overall consideration of 11,603 crore rupees. And this bank completed acquisition of City Bank's consumer business and non-banking financial company consumer business. So the sale excludes City's institutional client businesses in India basically fine. So recently Axis Bank has completed the acquisition of City Groups India consumer businesses. Now talking about few important banks that were in news these days. So first of all Reserve Bank of India has recently imposed a 5000 rupees cap on withdrawals by the individual customers from Tamil Nadu based Musri Urban Cooperative Bank. Okay. Why? Because of its deteriorating financial condition. So the restrictions on the lender will remain in force for the next six months from the close of business on 3rd of March and are subjected to review further. Okay. Also recently, the Federal Bank has installed 100 kilowatt power solar plant at Aluva office. Why? Aluva because the headquarters of Federal Bank lies in Aluva and Federal Bank Limited is a private sector bank in India and its main office lies in Aluva, Kochi, Kerala. Fine. Also Reserve Bank of India has scrapped the license of MP based Gra Cooperative Bank. Why? Due to insufficient capital. Okay. So as per the Reserve Bank of India, nearly 98.5 4% of the depositors of the cooperative bank are eligible to receive the full value of their savings from the deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation. Fine. Also recently public sector Indian overseas bank has launched the facility of issuance of electronic bank guarantee scheme in association with national e-governance services limited. So this is basically an instrument that is issued by the city headquartered bank in which the bank undertakes to guarantee a specific amount against the non-fulfillment of some type of action of the applicant. Okay. Now next is which country announced the Indo-Pacific tech envoy. So India and UK has launched the India Britain exchange scheme during the G20 foreign ministers meeting and British foreign secretary Mr. James Cleverly also announced the creation of UK's first tech envoy to the Indo-Pacific region which will boost the ties with India as a priority. So he will discuss the progress on the UK-India 2030 roadmap with Indian External Affairs Minister. Fine. So which two countries are associated with Indo-Pacific tech envoy? These are India and UK. And uh, UK was also in news because UK government has recently launched the Young Professionals Scheme under which Indian nationals of age 18 to 30 years can live and work in Britain for up to two years. Fine. And uh, also you'd have heard about Senior Mission Leaders course. What is this? So it is being held in Tokyo, Japan from 19th of June to 30th of June this year and Union Home Ministry has directed all the states and the Union territories to nominate three candidates, one each from military, police and civilian domains for this course and both men and women candidates are to be selected in this. Okay. Now also you'd have heard about exercise Desert Flag 8 and it is said to be organized from 27th of February to 17th of March this year and it is a kind of multilateral air exercise that involves the participation of UAE, France, Kuwait, Australia, UK, Bahrain, Morocco, Spain, Republic of Korea and the US. Basically, it aims to bring about the interoperability of different fighter engagement. Fine. Next question is, 
which city is the host of the G20 Foreign Ministers meeting? This is an easy question, I think. G20 Foreign Ministers meeting is scheduled to take place in physical format in New Delhi under India's G20 presidency. And this meeting is one of the largest gatherings of the foreign ministers, which is hosted by any G20 presidency. And the nine guest countries of the meeting are Bangladesh, Egypt, Mauritius, Netherlands, Nigeria, then Egypt, after that Singapore, then Spain and the country UAE. Okay. So talking about few important hosting conferences, the 7th International Dharma Dhamma Conference will be inaugurated by President Draupadi Murmu and this international conference will be organized, has been organized from 3rd of March to 5th of March in Bhopal city. Fine. Also, the first B2B Global Conference and Expo on Traditional Medicine under the Shanghai Cooperation Organization will be hosted by the Assam government to promote traditional medicines at the global level. And this event will be held in Guwahati. Now, also you have to remember that India has recently received the GSMA Government Leadership Award 2023 at the Mobile World Congress 2023. And this event was organized in Barcelona in the country Spain. Fine. Now talking about Spain, Spain has recently become the first European nation to pass a law permitting the menstrual leave. What does it mean? So basically women will be allowed to take leave while they are menstruating. And in Spain, now women have the option to take their monthly menstrual leave for three to five days if they feel uncomfortable during their periods. Okay. Next is which country has banned the use of foreign words to protect its language? So the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin has banned the use of foreign words to protect the Russian language. And the Russian government officials are totally banned from using the foreign words in official documents and correspondence as well as while carrying out their duties. So this decision was taken in an attempt to protect the Russian language from the Western influence. And separately, a list of words with foreign roots that can still be used will be released. So basically, Russia has banned the use of foreign words so as to protect their own language. Now, already we have seen that the state Mizoram has decided to export birds, I, chili to which country? To the country US. And this is also known as Thai chili. Now another exercise is the Cobra Warrior exercise, which is to be held at UK in the month of March itself. And it is a multinational exercise which involves the countries like Singapore, Finland, USA, South Africa and Sweden. Fine. So Indian Air Force will also participate in this exercise. Now, after traveling the Sunda Strait, the Indian submarine INS Sindhu Kesri docked in Indonesia country. And this is the first time an Indian submarine is docking in Indonesia. And with this, INS Sindhu Kesri makes history in India-Indonesia relations. Now, there is a satellite named as Zong Zing 26. So this is a satellite from the country China. And China has launched it at a cost of $333 million recently, using which particular rocket? Using the Long March 3D rocket. And main objective is to provide broadband connectivity for aviation and ship related operations. Okay. Next is Savita, who won the Sports Star ACES Sports Woman of the Year Award, plays which sport? So recently, Savita has received the Sports Star ACES Sportswoman of the Year Award after she led the team to a bronze medal performance at the Birmingham Commonwealth Games 2022. And also she was instrumental in the team winning the inaugural FIH Women's Nations Cup. Okay. So PR Srijesh 
has been named as Sportsman of the Year for his outstanding performance in 2022. This saw the Indian team finished third in the FIH Hockey Pro League 2021 to 22, then followed by silver medal at the Birmingham Commonwealth Games 2022. Fine. So Savita is associated with hockey. Now, apart from it, the captain of Argentina football team Lionel Messi recently won the best FIFA Men's Player Award, and it is one of the prestigious awards for sport personalities, especially for those in the football game. Right? Now, the 2023 T20 Women's World Cup was held in South Africa, and the final battle was between South Africa versus Australia. in which the australian team has won the battle and uh, with this australian women's team is winning the t20 world cup for the sixth time now you'd have heard about sergio ramos garcia he is a spanish football player and he is popular for his aggressive play recently he has announced his retirement from the international football now talking about international shooting sport federation Recently it has conducted the ISSF World Shooting Championship and uh, it was held in Cairo Egypt so India's Rudraksh Patil and R Narmada Nitin won the gold medal so this is the first time when India has won the gold in this competition next is which tennis player broke the Steffi Graf's record of leading the WTA rank for 377 weeks so novak djokovic has defeated thomas mekak at dubai championships and with this he has broken the record for the most time spent at number 1 in the professional tennis rankings by a man or a woman so his 378th week in the atp's top spot has surpassed steffi graf's record of 377 leading the wta fine so this is novak djokovic and he is from the country serbia next is international health regulations are associated with which institution so the first round of negotiations concerning the amendments to the who international health regulations 2005 concluded recently and more than 300 suggested changes were proposed for this document so international health regulation 2005 is being implemented by 196 countries across the world and it is the binding instruments of international law that entered into force in 2007 right so it is related to the world health organization last question is which institution has set up a panel to protect the investor interest so supreme court recently said that it will be setting up a six member panel to look into the regulatory mechanisms to protect the investors interest after a report by a us short seller hindenburg on the adani conglomerate led to large investor losses and as we know that hindenburg research alleged a massive financial fraud on adani groups but the adani group strongly denied the allegations and called hindenburg's report a calculated attack on india its institutions and growth story fine so the central supreme court has set up a panel to protect the investor interest so these are the most important current affairs and the news from today and already we have completed the current affairs for the month of november as well as for the month of december and now you have to tell me you want to revise which month january or the february and once we choose the month then within 1 to 2 days we will start our revision session as well as earlier fine so don't forget to write your views in the comment section you want the january month or february month and the people who are new to this channel you can refer to the previous lectures for the revision of november or december current affairs fine now let's start with today's quiz here on the slide you can see five questions which have been taken from the past 2 3 days current affairs pause the video and try to solve each of these questions and at the end of the lecture do not forget to share your scores in the comment section so please be honest and do not cheat with yourself so that's it for today i hope you have liked the session these were the important news and events from today 
and we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs till then stay tuned thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to gk today with this minuzad sana signing off